Okay, uh, in this video we're going to talk about scoring. Uh, you want to focus in here because I'm going to give you what I can. I've spent a lot of time just working this over at one point. You may get to this point too. I had a bunch of code and I wasn't quite sure what was happening where, so I backed down and I deleted a bunch of stuff that I added and I got back to a really simple set of procedures where I knew that when I clicked a button something happened and then I tried to rebuild it. You may have to do that. This definitely required a lot of focus on my part. Uh, to make work, but here's what I'm looking for, three different buttons. Okay, the first button is your hit button, so when you hit, obviously it's totaling up what happens, okay? And, oh wow, look at that, I've got a glitch. See, I've got to work on why that's happening, why that dealer card's moving out there. Um, I'll work on that, I'll make that happen. Um, I've got a card that's called, a button that's called Redeal, okay? And when I hit it, obviously, uh, redeal goes through, and it just sets player score to zero, zero, dealer score to zero, sets the hit back to the default number, sets the dealer hit back to a default number, which is something I've implemented. Uh, I've got this button pressed variable I'll talk a little bit about, try to give you an idea of how I'm using that. And then I shuffle the card deck. So basically, I set everything back to a set of default values and reshuffle the deck when I hit that button. Um, now, if I click Stand, See, this is, it's got some bugs still. I'll redeal. Here I am at 11. I'm going to stand. It goes to 21 and it stops. Okay? So now I've got it set so that it will, it will deal to 17 and then stop. Here's 12. There's 22. Bust. Uh, 4. There we go. All the way out to 22. 4, 8, 10, uh, 8, 10, 12, 22. Okay? So that's how the, the stand button works. And let me, um, that was the tough one. Uh, to get it to calculate the score of the dealer and then stop at 17 or hit if it's less than 17, that was difficult. Now, obviously, right now, every time I'm hitting the player hand, I'm getting a weird result where it's, it's see what it's doing up there? That is just not good. Um, but I'm going to figure out what's going on with that. It looks like I'm getting the next two cards. Watch this. If I stand on this and it goes out, all right, so... There's the four. This is just giving me an idea of what's happening in mine. Four of spades. I bet you the four of spades shows up down here. See? So it's showing me the next card in the deck right now, and that's something that I'll, I'll work on and, and figure out what's going on. Um, yep. Okay, so anyway, the basic, the first stand anyway works to where it will stand out to 17 and then hit. My ace is still worth 10. That's something I'm going to have to work on, too. My ace is still not 11. I'm not going to say the ace has to be 1 or 11, because uh, let's not go there, because then you have to have the, the computer make a good decision on whether or not you want it to be a 1 or an 11. Let's just say aces are worth 11, flat out, okay? Um, but I haven't done that yet. It's still worth 10. All right. So what I, what I did is this is it. Um, I go ahead and I say getter setter player score equals 0, dealer score equals 0, because every time I compute the scores... I set player score and dealer score to zero. I compute all the cards that are on the table, okay? And then I set the player score and the dealer score inside of my getter setter to that value. If it's still that value, when we do the computation, it will add to it, and you start getting really big numbers, okay? Now, I've created a getter setter value called dealer hit, and I set that equal to the value of getter setter dot hit, all right? And that's when I hit stand. And then I've got a button pressed value that I have set to one. So let's go to my panel class and take a look at what I'm doing here. Um, I have uh, a method here. Okay, so I go through and I draw the first two cards of the deck. All right. And if getter setter button pressed equals one, and only in that case, only after I've hit the button, right, um, it's going to call score it, which takes three things now. It takes the number, the card number we're going to add, and it takes a true and a, and a false for the true uh, for arguments two and three. And what I've done is I've created Boolean dealer, Boolean player. And you'll see how that works. And so if it basically figures out how to add those together, hopefully you already have that happening. And now if it's if the player value is true, it adds to the player score. And in this case, you can see that the player value, when I call it, is true. All right, so this is true, so it's going to add player score based on that particular for loop. Okay. And then what I do is I go down and the next one is to add the next two cards into the dealer hand as far as um, – 
No, this is the player score once again because I'm... Okay, and then this one here is going to be the player score, right? Because um, basically I'm saying the second card through the number that the hit is. We're going to loop through all those cards. We're going to call score it, and we're going to figure out how much those are worth. And then the last thing we're going to do is this gets called after you call after you hit the stand button. This loop uh, is set up so that um, dealer hit becomes a value that's high enough that this loop will run. If you hit the stand button, uh, dealer hit is set to the value of hit, right? So if you've hit three times or whatever, and your hit is three, dealer hit then becomes three, okay? And it will loop through and it will then do this, which will calculate the rest of the cards after you hit stand. So I'm calculating score with three different for loops. And once again, you might wanna, you know, this takes a little bit of just sort of wrapping your mind around it, Try to keep it simple, all right? You want to back down. You want to back up your program. Um, now, I'm doing my scoring inside of my runnable thread, all right? And what I'm doing is only in the event the button has not been pressed, all right? Because what I figured out was the panel is refreshing at a much slower rate than this thread is running. So this thread will trigger if you hit, if you set button press to 1 before it's gone through and calculated a score, all right, this will this particular loop will run and it will think that a value is zero, for example, the dealer score, when really the dealer score should be 17, okay? So I'm saying only when button pressed is zero do I want to loop through this. Now, the reason why is because at the end of the very last thing I do after I compute all the scores and I make sure all the getter setter values contain valid scores, I set getter setter button pressed equal to zero, all right? And so inside of my main activity fragment, I'm saying, okay, now once that's zero, once I know all those for loops have been run and all the scores are sitting up there in getter setter, now I'm going to decide whether or not when the person hits stand, I'm going to do something, right? And if the dealer hit is greater than one, right, uh, and the dealer score is less than 17, and in this case the dealer score is not zero, just a double check there. I'm going to set the player score to zero, the dealer score to zero. I'm going to hit increase dealer hit by one, and I'm going to set button press to one. All right, now if button pressed is set to one, right, inside a panel, all of these score hits are going to trigger the next time the screen refreshes. All right, and then button pressed is going to go back to zero, which may be a cause of some of the bugs I'm experiencing. I don't know. But you want to try to get to the point, uh, and I'm going to try to fix mine up, and my next video may contain an explanation of why this is happening. Okay, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to look at it. But at the very least, you should be able to stand and have it stand on a number. It should hit up to 17 and then deal one more card. At the very least, that stand button should work. The redeal, see here's 17. I'm clicking stand and nothing happens, right? All right, so it's totally possible to at least get that far, and I've got a little bit of debugging to do, but uh, good luck. We're looking for three buttons that work fairly well. This is where it starts to get difficult.